Nashville runs the Daily Morning Show where we talk about the latest topics in entertainment. I'm Brittany Jones Cooper. I'm Shannon Coffey. I'm Allie Colbert. And I'm Lucas Tim. Hi, everyone. Yeah. Hi, guys. Good morning. Woo! Guys, I just want you to know we had the most epic dance party backstage, and I just yeah. love you all so much. I'm tired. I'm yeah. out of breath. It was I'm amazing. Cold. It was a Donna Summer Michael Jackson gold yeah, right there. Yeah, I mean, there. just a classic. Oh, I love Sorry you guys Jackson. couldn't be there. <laughs> We should just have a dance party show, though. I think we'll do that for you guys and everybody. That would be fun. We were actually thinking of having um, me get married so that we could party at the wedding. (laughs) We just need a wedding. (laughs) (laughs) Whatever it takes. Thank you for doing that for us. You're welcome. Thank you. Well, A24 has just delivered a hot and ready trailer of its newest horror flick, Slice. The film marks the big screen debut of Chance the Rapper and follows him as a pizza delivery driver who sets out to find the culprit behind a slew of pizza delivery murders. Let's take a look. (laughs) I'm gonna tell you a story about a ghost, a werewolf, and a pretty shitty pizza place. It all started when the werewolf came back to town. A pizza delivery boy was murdered while making a routine delivery. Kingfisher Chronicle, can I ask you a few questions? Find the wolf, you'll find your killer. We're denying ghost involvement. The killing of Sean Hammerschmidt. Looks like I'm going on a wolf hunt tonight. What the fuck does that have to do with pizza? Your pizza place is a gateway to hell. Wait, wait, so you're telling me that my pizza place is built on a gateway to hell? I've been saying that. What? Never. Calm down. This is something you should have ended a long time ago. everything that A24 puts out, especially mm-hmm. their horror flicks. I feel like they always have a really cool vibe. Mm-hmm. All their graphics. Yeah. A24 really awesome. is super cool. That trailer's particularly difficult for me to follow, though. <laughs> like, I have no idea what's going on, There's I feel. There's so much. It's pizza and murder. And, and they have scooters. Yeah, and it's, the, it's a lot. But also the gates of hell are under the pizza place. There's a yes. lot going on with yes. that. I think that movie's pretty cool. The guy directing is named Austin Vesely, and he also directed Chance's music videos. It's also his feature film debut, too. Right. So it's like kind of a big coming out for both Chance and this director, which is yeah. kind of cool. It just makes me think of Pizzagate, which is a whole different story. Oh, <laughs> oh I don't know. But I, just as disturbing. The Hillary you know? Clinton selling children is the subplot got cut exactly. from the film, unfortunately. There's werewolves and then that. I'm yeah, right. I'm excited to see Chance the Rapper. I'm going to admit, like, I sort of like his music, but I love him as a person and mm-hmm. as an artist. And he seems like somebody who, like, chooses things very intentionally. Right. So I feel like this will probably be, like, a big star turn for him. We've seen a lot of rappers go into acting, Ice T, Ice Cube. Now Chance, why not? Uh, I like Chance because he's like a rapper that puts a lot of effort into his performances. I've yeah. seen him live once, and I was really impressed by like the stagemanship and just how he could put wow. on a show. The stagemanship. Is that, yeah. is that a word? I don't showmanship. Know. I don't know. Showmanship. 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 Stage presence. Stage presence. I, showmanship. I, thought, I just combined. I thought it was a word. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm making it a word. I was like, I want to have good stagemanship. <laughs> stagemanship. Yeah. You have great stagemanship. Um, but it's cool. Like, he's following, you know, in the footsteps of like Rihanna, J Lo, singers going to movies, yeah. which is like something natural. I guess they all do. It's interesting to see in like a trailer like that there's the uh, the young guy from Stranger Things yeah. well, I don't know what his name is he plays Steve yeah. in Stranger yeah. Things uh, yeah I yeah. like that but um, he like he was in Stranger Things this has like a similar like vibe of like nostalgia he's like wearing like the, mm-hmm. the you know the clear the clear like period like the clothes of that year or whatever and it's just like whenever we have someone that nails a certain genre <laughs> we just like to just like repeat it over and over again we're like you like it here's another here's what? another here's <laughs> another it's like he could probably do a different role but yeah. It's only a second role, though. Yeah. Maybe you know what I mean? But do you but know what that, I mean? You know, it's just like repeating the same people totally. the same type of thing. Happened with Kit Harrington with Jon Snow. But also, oh, yeah. and yeah. I think both are related a little bit more so with Kit Harrington is that they're not allowed to change their hair. Like, Kit is not, was not allowed to shave or cut yeah. his hair, so he had to do, like, medieval okay. gladiator or whatever exactly. movies because he well, lets him play. Matthew Harrington was also in that HBO movie about yes. um, tennis, and he was really funny in that. He, he played, like, and he got to keep his hair, but he yeah. tied it back in mm. a bun, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And, um, but he was really funny in that and played a dumb character, which I thought was great because in Game of Thrones he gets like told he doesn't know anything, but he's still kind of wise in mm-hmm. his own way. But in that 
Bleach in that like HBO movie, I guess it was, or a miniseries. Yeah, the TV show movie was really was good. So dumb. Yeah. <laughs> and the other the other person that comes to mind is also from the Stranger Things cast was the young boy who then was in It. Oh yeah. And it was oh, like yeah. a similar story of like five Been boys trying right. to. And was anyone with me on this? No, story? I get it. Well, no, you guys have casting creepy yeah. roles probably sucks because like <laughs> yeah. Yeah. you no, make money. I would love it. If you well, want you to would typecast love me in a creepy role, please do. Yeah. <laughs> I also love that Zazzy Beats is in this. She yeah. plays like the female love interest, I think. And she's been in Atlanta and Deadpool. So she's sort of doing these like action-y sort of roles, which is kind of cool to see. Yeah. And she's just like cool. I love she's, her. Yeah. She's so good in Atlanta. She's just cool. You guys yeah. watch Atlanta? Yeah. Atlanta's incredible. Woo! She's such a good actress. Yeah, I love her. Okay, well, moving on. Um, to get, I've moving been on to Atlanta. To, we've been to Atlanta? <laughs> Ooh, good yeah. for you, Abby. Nice. That's when I, where I saw the Coca-Cola factory that we referenced oh, in yesterday's right. episode, if you guys tuned in. Nice. Well, yeah. not, soda, not all sodas are equal. No. Mm. Not all sodas are equal. equal. That's what we did learn. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Well, okay. Two goats. Two goats, guys, were found roaming on the N-Line train tracks in Brooklyn on Monday. The goats were rescued by the police along with the help of former Daily Show host and animal rights advocate John Stewart, who later adopted the goats and named them Billy and Willie. <laughs> After the incident, the New York City subway account tweeted, Thanks, John Stewart and Farm Sanctuary for adopting Billy and Willie. You are the goat. Yes. Hilarious. Uh, who oh is God. writing so that Twitter account? I'm sure they're on SNL as well. That oh, is yeah. a... Yeah, that's are... a classic SNL joke. Yeah, <laughs> that is. I feel like the subway really used this moment to be like, look at us, we're fun. This right. is a story about us that's positive. Like, the goats are alive. Yeah, well, we... like the people who jump on in front of the trains every day. And yeah. Totally. I was gonna say, like, how do 60 people die every year from jumping on tracks, but these goats survive? Yeah. Fucking goats, yeah. man. MT, MTA headquarters was definitely like, leverage the goat story. Yeah. We got a goat story. Yeah. The L shutting down soon. We gotta use this goat. They wanna ride this. Little, we gotta milk it, literally. Um, yeah. Oh, 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 goat. Don't you milk goats? Um, apparently, <laughs> I don't know about goats. Apparently, the New York Times said that there are. <laughs> Slaughterhouses nearby, yeah. and they may have escaped. So this is even a better story. I'm oh waiting. I'm waiting for the A24 movie Somebody about the goats. Yeah. Do you Somebody think already bought the right story. Maybe it's a love story. <gasps> These two goats didn't want to die yeah. together. And they, oh, like you know, they didn't want to yeah. die. And yeah. they were like, we're in love. Let's escape. And they're like, what's the best place in New York? Uh, the yeah, subway. the subway. It's, it's a mashup, and actually, uh, the Thai cave boys ride uh, yes. them out. <laughs> oh, I love Perfect. it. Perfect. Yeah. To try out. And it's great. And then they literally end up in a interesting tie. Yeah. Interesting story. I just love that. You know, someone will. Jump on the rights for like anything before. Hundred percent. Yeah. And you know they're not like they actually went to a farm, not like a farm. Yeah. Like they exactly. went to a real farm. It's John Stewart and his wife's farm. They bought um, several years ago to like where they like keep um, abused animals mm -hmm. and so they sweet. nurse them back to health, or whatever, which is really nice. I'm glad John Stewart's doing something. I heard he was trying to work on that HBO show. It didn't work out. So. Mm -hmm. and we're we saving animals. We, we're saving animals. We see him, Uncle Bear, and two book. Queens a little bit, like, you know, so. I also don't know how much this was a slaughterhouse. I feel like these goats escaped that goat yoga phenomenon because they're like, <laughs> oh this sucks. God. This hipster nonsense is bullshit. So what out. was that exactly? The goat yoga thing is still happening. It's like you go to yoga and then you let goats crawl all over you. But then I know people that have done it and the goats like pee on you and poop on yeah. you. I was like, what's wrong with people? I had to shoot a video for <laughs> someone who was like, I want you to shoot me doing goat yoga. And I was like, okay, sure. And literally she was like, get a close up of its butt. Its butt's <laughs> opening and it opens up and it's just like pebbles like shooting That's out like onto your yoga yeah, mat. Yeah. And then they they have someone who's like responsible for just sweeping up the turds and they're like, get back on the mat yeah. after after a goat's pissed and pooped all over yeah. and you're like, I feel so connected with my soul. <laughs> I'm like, I don't That's know. That's why these goats were like, nope, white. I gotta kill myself. The yoga probably smell so bad. Oh, white, yeah. white and it kind of hurts when the goat is like jamming your back. I don't know, maybe I just don't have enough back muscles to protect <laughs> no, myself. That doesn't but sound like goat was like, <laughs> 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 I think it's one of, that's yeah, one of the whoa. whitest things I've ever heard in my life. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. That is terrible. You said it, not me. So, so, you also so you've wish, been doing it for how long? I've been doing it for five years, and it's really <laughs> changed my body. How much rosé do you drink during it? I do it, I do it in the Hamptons with rosé and yeah. the, that water, whatever. Okay. Okay, well, uh, moving on to other TV news. Um, uh, uh, Nisi Nash is clawing her way into the late night arena. The actress is all set to host and executive produce a pilot for a late night series on TNT. Titled Naked with Nisi Nash, the show will see, well, will see Nash offer advice on love, sex, romance, and relationships with everyday people. I just laughed at it being called naked. Oh, uh, and I was like, and I was like, I was like, what did I do wrong? Oh god. <laughs> no, nothing. I just think it's what's funny. The, well, yeah. Well, this is cool. It uh, might be a working title. They might change it by the time it. it actually like. Yeah. It's like sort of like up. a. Is she gonna be naked? It's kind of confusing. Right. Yeah. I think it means raw, vulnerable, vulnerable. Which Nisi Nash, I'm a huge fan of, and I've seen so many interviews with her, and she really is 
she really has opened up about her story, her journey, how she's supportive of other women in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Like she really is this like guru in her own right, I think just from life experience. So I think she is somebody who I would listen to for like relationship advice and like life advice, parenting advice. Yeah. I don't know, I just like really respect her. Well, speaking of interviews, I, we, there's a certain someone we all know who interviewed her on Bill and yeah. got to talk about her very successful show, Claws. So let's take a look at that. Yeah. Well, the first part, when you say claws, it, it, it is about nails, but it's also about women trying to claw their way to the top. Um, and it is about women taking their place. Um, I, I'm not even going to say their place. Women taking over an industry that was primarily dominated by men. Yeah. What she's talking about is drug right. selling. Is oh, an industry. Yeah. yeah, we'll get to the top of that industry, lady. Yeah, oh. we can also sell drugs. And speaking of industries dominated by men, she's now going to be the one of only two women on yeah. Late Night. So, like, it's like this article is like, there's only other person is Samantha B. Um, but I think Netflix is going to bring out more women on Late Night. So, this is really big for her. I, I had not watched Claws. I've heard it's great. Claws is great. It's yeah. about Santa's wife. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> yeah, it's Santa's about, wife. Oh, it's about come how she on. sells you drugs. You guys can laugh at that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> they won't even laugh at that. What's up, hey? Uh, okay. Uh, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. I just like can't stand when. It's okay. It's all right. Let's talk about yeah. nails. Well, you know, can I say thing? <laughs> which so TNT is kind of in the middle of this rebranding. They're gonna try to become. I'm gonna put this in quotes, like the female FX, which oh. is center programming more directed towards female viewers. Which is Claws was their kind of foray to like scripted, um, like premium drama directed towards female viewers. So this is kind of makes sense too that they're gonna have this late night show with Nisi Nash. Who's also really funny if you see her on Scream Queens yes. and We Know 911. So to have her talk show, I think, it, I think it's really great for her um, and for TNT. Yeah, I mean, she's obviously a comedic actress, but in Claws, and I um, have watched all of it, mm -hmm. she's a dramatic actress. I mean, she has some really tough scenes. There's like action. And she's, I mean, she's super versatile, and I think it's so easy for us to pigeonhole mm -hmm. people. Like seeing them on Reno 911, her character was so big. But she's a really talented actress, and I think she's one of those few people who I trust in that realm to do both. Totally. And that's why I, I'm excited for the talk show. So I think she'll really like, she's really good at sharing herself, which I think is hard. Totally. Yeah. Like it being so honest. And Claus was renewed for a third season. Yeah. So she's working hard. It's like a ratings juggernaut for yeah. them. So I like, it's almost like when NBC finds a talent that they really love, they mm -hmm. keep, I mean, I like to see that TNT is like using their talent to like create more projects. It's so smart. Yeah. It's like, I think if you look at like what happened to Comedy Central, letting Samantha Bee and John Oliver go, like you really should hold on to your talent oh, yeah. and nurture them and make sure they, they have the creative license do what they want. So it's smart that they're like looking at Nisi and being like, yeah. let's do more with you because you're great. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, And I hope that this inspires more people to think of late night TV in different formats, mm -hmm. not just the usual like topical, totally. political, because it gets kind of stale. And I think that's why a lot of shows like new shows don't last is because you're going against shows that have been doing this for years. Mm -hmm. But this is something that she's really going to be doing on her own so she can set a new tone and it's not going to be like, we're not going to be like comparing her to yeah. everybody else. It reminds me of Busy Phillips has a talk show yeah. coming out on E, which that is, will be, so will be similar yeah. to yeah. this, I think, more so less Samantha B, more yeah. pop culture love advice. Well, even look at what Steve Harvey's done. I mean, he mm -hmm. went into daytime, but he's not doing the typical show. He's doing advice and dating yeah. segments. So I think it'll be that with a woman's edge and totally. time. It'll be fine. Steve well, more, Harvey giving advice. I know, right? <laughs> I know. But like people love that show. It's crazy. I know. They it love is them. crazy. Well, we are excited about Nisi Nash's show. There's another show we're really excited about. Uh, there's a new dating show coming to E. The UK series The Bi Life has been ordered by E and will follow a group of bisexual, pansexual, fluid, or questioning British singles living together and navigating dating. The show will be hosted by Australian drag queen Courtney Act and will be filmed in Barcelona. Woo! Can I wait for this? I think it's going to be so good. I think yeah, yeah, it's going to be crazy. Yeah, people think <laughs> when they think of like the bi life, I think they think of the Tila Tequila show, which uh. was just like so horrible and did not represent the LGBTQ community well at all. And this seems like they're actually they cast real people who are really wanting to find love, and I think it'll be really yeah. good for people to see, especially well, in the U.S. Yeah, well, so prude about things. Well, being bisexual is so hot right now, yeah. so I'm I'm glad they're they're jumping on this. But um, yeah, it's cool. I read this this quote that in the past. Past four years, 73% more people identify as bisexual in the UK. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of interesting that they're, this is just going to be in the UK and Ireland for now in Octo and premiering in October. Yeah. So yeah, I think it's great. I mean, I'm not, I'm not surprised it's not premiering in the US first. We're still a pretty puritanical society mm -hmm. that doesn't quite understand like sexuality can be different things the across the spectrum. But um, this is cool. The show's getting, show getting made. Yeah, I'm excited to see it. Um, I mean, I've been wondering for a while when this would happen. And I'm just curious um, about how 
I mean, obviously people support it. I'm curious how they're going to capture it and like right. the nuances of it because I could see a lot of people being having a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I don't know. I just I'm I'm just I'm just curious to see um, the light that uh, people are portrayed in. So it makes it. Uh, I don't know. I want to. I'm excited for it and I support it, but I want to see how how they're able to do it in a way that's yeah. not tequila, uh, te yeah. tequila. Yeah. You know. Because I feel like that show definitely hurt mm -hmm. the bisexuality <laughs> argument that everybody <laughs> makes always. Um, and I'm really excited that they're including pansexuals and people who are more like sexually fluid. And I want this show to hopefully, I want it to be fun and be like, oh, we're all interested in each other, but also kind of show like the subtle differences between those sexualities mm -hmm. because I think that's something that I'm always trying to like explain to people. And I'm like, well, you know what? I don't want, I can't do like all this work right. every single day. So if there was like a show, a good reality show who did it. Yeah, and I, I just feel that like in something like this, um, a lot of people have, I, I want to say naive, but I don't know if that's the right word, uh, perception of sexuality where it's like, wow, if all these people are bisexual, then they're all candidates for each other right. in dating. Yeah. And that's not really accurate. That's kind of like if you have a friend who's gay and then saying you know another person who's gay and being like, I'll set you two up. <laughs> yeah. And it's just like, that's like if you know one straight person and another straight person, it doesn't make them compatible. Yeah. So, you know, those are some nuances that I would imagine are quite difficult to capture. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how a reality show will do it, but I will definitely be, be watching. I feel like E! has done a really good job with doing, like, honest reality. You know, it's like that middle ground between something that's really exploitative and then, like, TLC. Yeah. You know, so I feel like they have a way of, like, giving people lessons and, like, teaching people. Yeah. Because people do need to be educated. I mean, mm -hmm. people are so, like you said, kind of naive or ignorant about what this means. Mm -hmm. And I think it can be a really positive show for a lot of people. And then, obviously, for a lot of young kids out there who are going to be able to see themselves probably for the first time dating and loving and exploring yeah. and seeing that that's okay. Yes. And even when we watched Queer Eye, the most recent season, and we saw each of the guys sort of talk about mm -hmm. and try and understand a different part of the LGBT spectrum, that I think a lot of people assume, oh, if you're a part of the LGBT community, you understand every aspect mm -hmm. of the community struggle and it's not true so you know understanding all of the parts that make up the the spectrum yeah. you know it will be uh, enlightening yeah absolutely Definitely. Okay. I'm excited, excited. Yeah. I'm excited for the show yeah Well, we all know the struggle of teaching your parents how to use social media, and so does Hamilton writer Lin-Manuel Miranda. Lin's mom accidentally tweeted her son, are you home, instead of texting it. <laughs> to which Lin responded, mom, I'm in Wales. Move your Twitter app like three screens over from your text app. <laughs> oh, mom. I don't, even this is like pretty bad for a parent. Yeah. Like my mom is like pretty good with social media, and uh, you know, obviously parents make mistakes, but opening up your Twitter app and sending a tweet by accident, that's like completely different. You know it what I mean? It's so different. It's really so different. Maybe she was sleepy. Yeah. Sleepy. <laughs> Maybe she was just sleepy and she was Maybe. Just I kind of like that too, just tweeting out like, I don't know where my son is. Where are you? <laughs> Someone's gonna tell me. Like yeah. just tweeting out to the world. Ugh. Whatever. Yeah, I don't. My parents aren't bad on social media. More, it's my grandma who's my who's, grandma, who's oh a diva and amazing on Instagram. She'll always be like, she'll comment as if like no one else is gonna see that. And like, I'll be with a friend in the picture, and she'll be like, those eyebrows. <laughs> dot 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 <gasps> dot 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 dot. And I'm like, nanny. First of all, those all those dots. Nanny. I call her nanny. Nanny, those dots. Second of all, she can see that comment. I mean, it's like my sister. This I will never forget this. She posted on Facebook. The, that article about Aziz Ansari when it came out, and this was like, yeah. you know, the, the Me Too Aziz Ansari article, and she had some comments about it. And my grandma made her status at my sister, or she just wrote her, her name, Jackie, I am very eager to hear about your date with Aziz. <laughs> <laughs> Please call me. And my sister called her, she was like, if you thought that like these things happened to me, you just made a Facebook Right, status? you didn't call me? <laughs> yeah, she's seriously wild. I mean, she's oh, yeah, out right. of her mind. It's frustrating, my dad just uses, um, my dad's 84 years right. old, he's super old, and he just uses Facebook to like, show his past accomplishments. So like during Black History Month, <laughs> three years ago, he just started posting photos every day of his accomplishments, like honoring himself for Black History Month. <laughs> I love and it. And he's continued to do it every single year for the last three or four years, where the entire year, he'll just post like, I did this once upon a time. And it's the same like 
25 photos and it's so painful but I feel like it's like how he's connecting to the world uh, yeah it's just like if it makes them happy yeah. it's fine you know I just love like this they, there's some things that are just so classic adults on Facebook yeah. and I say adults but like uh, when a, when someone posts something and then they have to sign their full name yeah. Yeah. and it oh, says yeah. their name it's just like love you mom aka yeah. Mary jo-. I'm like what? we know who you are <laughs> no. oh my god well, like, I'm Go ahead. I'm kind of scared of what I'm going to be like when I become a mom because I'm already like kind of bad at social media <laughs> and like texting in general like I will constantly text the wrong person like I'll be talking about someone and instead of sending it to my friend who I'm going to tell them about I like text that person the like, stuff I'm saying and I'm how like, bad is that? You've done no. that to me before. Yeah, I did that to Brittany and I was like wow, thank God it was a compliment. Uh, yeah, it was something really nice about me. I was like, thanks. And she's like, oh, I thought you were somebody else. I'm, I'm like, oh. always worried because I'm texting insults and I'm yeah. always worried <laughs> that the wrong person will get it. Or if you like send someone, you know how you could send someone's Instagram story to someone else? Yeah. yeah. And like comment on it? I'm always doing that and I'm always afraid to send it right back to them being like, look at this dumb bitch. I, I was in high school, I was in high school and I was at this, you know when they when the group message first came out and there was people on it and they were talking about a party and one person wasn't invited and I was like, and then I, I'm like, I said, well that's because blah 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 hates her so much or whatever. And then, and then the person no. commented like, uh ha ha. And I'm like, holy oh. shit. And I went, wrong message, wrong message. It's wrong message, like repeatedly in my mind processing it, but also typing it out to 20 people on the group message were all getting me like freaking out, like, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. Uh, I got anxiety thinking about that. That's so sinking feeling yeah. when you send the text, you're like, I sent it! Yeah. Yeah. I sent it once to my, uh, my boss where I was like, this fucking job is driving me crazy and it sucks and I hate it. And then she was like, oh. Uh, and I realized the mistake I made and then I felt so embarrassed that I didn't want to admit to the mistake that I was like, you know, I just think honest feedback is really important. And I want us to like talk about this. And she was like, you know what? I really like how forward you are and it worked. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> Listen to this. My first day at a new job, okay, I was answering the calls for my boss, trying to pick up her phones. I missed a call, okay? She writes to me later in the day after I left. She was like, hey, Allie, like, did you get a call from this person? And I, I meant to write, sorry, I missed the call, but I just, I, I wrote, sorry, I miss you. <laughs> <laughs> and she wrote back, like, see you tomorrow. <laughs> I, miss and I was like, sorry, I miss you. Yeah. Uh, I just get afraid with the photo taking. For me, it's like Insta stories is always right. accidentally taking photos. Yes. And I'm just like, I know one day I'm going to be like in a weird compromising position and it's going to be out there. Like, oh, that's my weird. That's horrible. Yeah. That's like, if you ever go on Facebook on your phone, it was like, hey, do you want to post these horrible photos yeah. from your camera roll? I'm like, right. no, I don't want to post the photo of a spot on my thigh that I texted <laughs> my mom asking, is this cancer? Exactly. <laughs> I don't want to post that. It's a they make it my so elbow. easy to I'm fail. I'm not posting this. They're like, upload it to your summer album. Right. Like, no. <laughs> they make it so easy. Upload <laughs> to your summer album. Yeah. Um, no, they, want you to, they want you to fail. So they basically, want it's not just moms that are bad at social media. Everyone. It's literally all of it's us. It's easy to be bad. It's a trap. Yeah. It's a vicious trap. It is. Well, anyways, moving on. Now it's time for our guest today. Rima Sampat is an Indian-American actress known for her roles in NBC's Shades of Blue and Netflix's Jessica Jones. She can currently be found, however, as Shuri Tombal, the first South Asian inmate on Orange is a New Black. Please put your hands together for Rima Sampat. Hi, thanks for coming. Thank you. Hi. 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 Nice to you. Welcome, Rima. Hi. Nice to see How you. How are you doing today? Good. How are you? Thanks good. For are you good at us. social media? I'm getting there. <laughs> Apparently nowadays you have to be. It's a journey. To survive. It's a real... Yeah. But I was checking out your Instagram and it was really fun because you have all these really fun photos on the set of Orange is the New Black. Mm -hmm. um, so what was that experience like for you? Because it's such a franchise now and it's yeah. like so iconic. Such a big deal. I, I actually like didn't think it would be such a big deal. <laughs> um, but it is. It was, it was amazing for a couple of reasons. Um, the first was I was just so floored by how many women work on that show, mm -hmm. not just on the cast, but... Um, the, the producers, the writers, directors, it, they were all women. Mm -hmm. And um, they're like pioneers, you know, the show is a pioneer. Genji and creating the show for women um, who have, are all different shapes and sizes mm -hmm. and colors. It was, it was an honor to work on something like that. And then, you know, just getting to play a character like Shruti <laughs> um, isn't very common. You don't get to be an Indian inmate mm -hmm. all the time who's vile and, um, despicable. <laughs> um, so that was that was really fun for me, and um, I was 
pregnant while I was filming oh, wow. it. So my little child, you know, um, was a part of that as well. <laughs> Your <laughs> so, child's been in a prison. Basically. Yeah. And, you know, I got to say some vulgar things with <laughs> so her. So can inside. they put that on their IMDb page? Yeah. Well? Yeah. Uh, yeah. She will be credited as well. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Yeah. Good the costumes made it pretty easy, though, because it's like the loose and then the big jacket. You w Yeah. You wouldn't even know the whole, I mean, six months of filming and you wow. would never, you can't tell. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Over that period, what were some of your favorite moments filming and working on Orange is the New Black? My favorite moments, I think, is when we were all together. Um, if you haven't seen it, I'm not going to spoil it, but there's a lot of kickball mm -hmm. on the show, and um, you know, there were it was really long hours, but we we were a team. You know, it was kind of metaphoric, but we we got to work together and um, and actually play kickball and try to win. <laughs> so that was that was actually really fun. And I could feel that emotion when I was watching. Yeah, they're really playing. I mean. Yeah, we were and, really playing. And this season is the first season where they they leave Lynchfield, so they're in a whole new place. So was it yeah. extra exciting being a part of this iconic show as they kind of reset the the world a little bit? Yeah, yeah, because I think we were all discovering it together, right? Like the original cast and mm -hmm. the new cast, mm -hmm. um, and even the writers and directors and producers. We were all kind of like, how do we navigate this new? prison with these right. new characters. So yeah, that was fun. Yeah, and season seven is already confirmed. Yeah. So are you going to be a part of that? Well, you don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, fingers crossed. Hopefully, crowned. yeah, yeah. But um, it, is, it is an iconic show. And I think it's the longest um, original content that Netflix mm -hmm. has had. Yes. So it's totally. an honor. Yeah. yeah. And you're also working on a new pilot right now. Yeah. It's called uh, Serena and Mel. Um, it's about two South Asian women who are kind of navigating being adults in New York City, you know, kind of like Sex in the City meets Broad City. Um, and it's great because the whole cast is South Asian, mm -hmm. um, which yeah. we're working on, you know, yeah. currently. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, I play a character named Sheila who's just blunt, straight to the point, no nonsense. Sheila? Inappropriate. Per perfect name for yeah. that character. Yeah. Everyone needs a Sheila in their uh -huh. life. I'll just say that. Sheila. Yeah, yeah. And it, you, you know, you mentioned the show is about Indian American women, and you're the first Indian American actress on Orange Is the New Black. I yeah, the first inmate. Inmate, South yeah. Asian inmate, yeah. Yeah. On the show. So tell me about that and what it means for you to be kind of a, a push in this representation. It's been great. I mean, um, so many Indian, Pakistani, Middle Eastern girls have come up to me and been so excited and honored that they can see someone who looks like them play a badass yeah. character, you know, not just a doctor or lawyer. Um, I think that's been the biggest um, exciting thing to about this character. Yeah. yeah, to just, one of the writers, she's Indian on the show, and she we were talking about it, and she's like, dude, we can be bad girls mm -hmm. too, yeah. you know? like. I know Indian girls have gone to jail. Yeah. <laughs> so like let's let's write about it, you know, let's show it. Yeah. That's so important. It's like I, I every show has like that role where you're just like, why do they always like pigeonhole? And it's like yeah. it must be so fun for you to just get to explore. Totally, totally. I got to play around and, you know, talk about blowjobs and, you know, <laughs> things that um, you wouldn't get to normally do as an Indian girl. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. The, uh, the strides that uh, the industry is attempting to make mm -hmm. in uh, representation and diversity, I feel is particularly visible right now in this moment with um, recently the premiere of Crazy Rich Asians, mm -hmm. yes. which okay. has had a yeah. huge one positive yeah, so reception. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, so uh, I think it must feel great to be a part of this moment in time. It, I feel so lucky to be pursuing this um, job in this moment in time. You know, we're excited about it. We're excited that, you know, we're not just secondary or tertiary characters anymore that are mm -hmm. going to push your story along. Like, we are the story now. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm pretty confident that there's going to be more coming after yeah. after something like this. Absolutely. Thank God. Yeah. yeah that right. movie was we, awesome. Yeah. yeah. We had um, Jenny Han on recently, mm -hmm. who just had a film um, premiere on Netflix. Uh, all the Boys all the, I Loved Before. Yeah, yeah. Letters yeah. to All the Boys yeah. I Loved yeah. Before. Yeah. Right. And uh, also um, an Asian protagonist. Mm -hmm. And um, I just think it's great. Yeah. yeah. I mean, because at the end of the day, we're just normal people. Like, right. sure, like, our cultural backgrounds influence maybe some decisions we make and whatnot. But, I mean... We all have the same issues. Absolutely. Yeah. So what made you want to get into acting? I'm always curious over that question. It is interesting, yeah. isn't it? Um, you know, some of it can be selfish at times <laughs> because you feel so good while you're acting, like yeah. when you kill a scene or something. It's yeah. so fulfilling. Um, but I think for me, representing my 
people and where I come from mm -hmm. is, is huge right now. Yeah. Right. And I, just the, the outpour of love that's come in and girls who are like now feel like they can do it mm -hmm. because they see me doing it, right. that's, that's awesome. Yeah. And is it, is it true that you studied at UCB? You did some improv? Yeah, Ooh. yeah, when I moved here, I did, yeah. I did. That's terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how people do that. How far did you get in the yeah. improv ranks? I got to the, like the third. I'm well, I almost finished. Okay. And then I was just like, I had too much anxiety. <laughs> I couldn't. Do, I'd rather just improv my own right. way. I'm right. about to start uh, 301 oh, next you month. Are. Yeah, it's yeah. Great. yeah, I'm it excited is, for it. But it's terrifying. We went to his show last month and I had that same feeling. I was like, I don't know how people do this. I was so anxious even watching it. Yeah. I mean, I think like the people who do it naturally are just really good at it. Yeah. I can never figure out the game. I'm like, how do you figure out the game in yeah. this? Shannon, you were on the Herald team, right? Yeah, oh, the wow. game is just the first unusual thing that makes the crowd laugh. I know, but like, yeah. how do you, they're always laughing. Shannon's like, that's all yeah. it is. No, it's, so, it's so much easier yeah. than we, we just like use, like let our anxiety take over, but it's usually the right. simplest thing in the scene. It's I so know, silly. I overcomplicate it. The hard part is watching really unfunny people play. <laughs> yes. Which was probably me. That's what's yeah. particularly cringe <laughs> you. That's yeah. why we were all scared of the show. We were like, what's Lucas gonna be like? <laughs> We sure. It was great. He was like the biggest laugh in the room. And we were like, whew, we can yeah. actually support yeah. him. It doesn't need to be awkward. Out yeah, yeah, it would have been an awkward like, Monday. It's that thing when, and I wonder if it's actually the same for actors, but for stand-ups at least, Shannon and I are both comedians, and you're backstage and you meet a comedian before a show and you like them, you're always curious how they're going to be on stage so you can really evaluate whether or not you like them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Even in class, like you don't want to be that one person. The bad one. just like... Right. You're like, I don't want to be like that. Yeah, so when you no one steps nervous. out and you you like yeah. initiate a scene and you're like, well, I'm out here by myself. Yeah. Oh, no, <laughs> I'm the bad one. Yeah. 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 It's the worst yeah. feeling in the world. Um, so, but do you, so do you like doing mostly drama, but you also kind of do comedy? You just a bit of both? Yeah, a bit of both. My, my comedic skills are just, um, me, yeah. you know, so I don't, I, I'm not like a sitcom -y, like mm -hmm. big person, but um, Orange is like a great totally. example yeah. of drama and comedy, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. it's so well written. So well written. I don't know how they do yeah. that. It's so amazing. So many storylines and it all comes together at the end. It's and great. like you said, it really just like set the standard for casting yeah. and storylines yeah. and things that they're tackling. For and sure. It's something I'm sure you're going to look back and be like, oh, that's cool. I'm going to be so proud of it for yeah. sure. And like the writers are like, moms, you know, like writing this crash shit. It's like awesome. I love it. Yeah. On a different note, um, I see on a lot of your content that you happen to be very good friends with Anthony from mm. Queer Eye. Yeah, uh, who's that? Uh, <laughs> Who? I'm curious, um, it, you know, is he actually a good cook? Or, uh... <laughs> he's terrible, he's terrible. Um, no, he's an amazing cook. Yeah, yeah I, knew, I, I knew him before he was even on the show and um, he makes me dinners all the time. Oh. When That's I was, so cool. Yeah, I'm, I feel so lucky. Lucky and spoiled. When I was yeah. pregnant, he would make me pots of like turkey chili and oh. like send me home in an Uber with it. I love <laughs> it. Sounds he, so he's nice. actually gonna come on our show, I think, in September. Yeah, I know, yes. I know. With Tan. Yeah. We're really excited They're for great. that. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. He's a yeah, he's a good guy. And before we go, I want to know a little bit about your nonprofit, Save Agato. What is that? I love that name. Yeah. Um, it's a nonprofit in old San Juan, Puerto Rico. Um, and we basically trap, neuter, and release the cats of Old San Juan. Oh. There's a huge overpopulation of cats there. People don't spay and neuter them. So we, we trap them, we, we spay them, and we get them adopted. And we move around like 500 cats a year. Whoa. Yeah. And there's still so many more coming. So spay and neuter your pets. Yeah, that's very needed. That's yeah. great. Yeah. Shannon had like upwards of 20 cats growing up in Puerto Rico. Yeah, I grew up in Bayamón. Oh my and God. I had like 32 cats at once was the highest number, but in general, like I had hundreds of cats. Huh. Yeah. You, so I needed, we needed to collaborate. Because <laughs> yeah, totally. I was a child and I was like, why can't we just stop? And my parents uh. were like, they're kitten machines. And I was like, I think there's a way to stop them from <laughs> yeah. having more kittens. You know, if you were there, if you could have helped us. Yeah, well, I have five cats. Oh, oh wow. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh. We flew them up to New York. What are their names? Um, Fatty, Twist, Yuka, Chiquita, and Persepolis. Oh. Persepolis. Oh. Persepolis. Wow. Do you yeah. think per, uh, like Fatty is jealous of Persepolis' uh. beautiful name? <laughs> <laughs> I, or is Fatty actually yeah, the cute one? Like I want the choice. Fatty's Fatty, the cute one. Fatty's the alpha. So oh, really? Oh. Fatty. Oh, okay. My name's yeah. Fatty. Yeah. Uh. Mine's like a mob boss. <laughs> mob boss. <laughs> I oh, love God. that. He's oh, my God. Five. So do you, li you like live in an apartment and the five cats and just like. Five cats, a baby, a husband, and me. Wow. <laughs> 
That's wow. the dream. That's your sitcom. Yeah. That's a, I know. They, I they, to tell. Yeah. I know. You just said you're not a sitcom actress, but I don't know. <laughs> I could be. That's we could write this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I it's an adventure. I see it happening. Well, Rima, yeah. thank you so much for thank joining us guys. today. So much for having me. Thank you so much. And you can catch Rima Stampad in season six of Orange is a New Black, currently streaming on Netflix. That's all from us today. We'll see you tomorrow. Same time, same table. Yeah. Yeah.